Hi everybody, Steve Bauman here. The video that you're going to be watching right now is an excerpt from a centerline construction workshop that I gave exclusively for my Patreon subscribers. So please enjoy the next 20 minutes and if you're interested in watching the entire video, it's going to be available on my Patreon page for a limited time only. And as always, if you enjoy the content on this channel, please remember to like and subscribe and turn on notifications so that every time I put out new content, you're in the know. The centerline construction concept starts from a place that is essentially abstract. We're not going to be talking about, in terms of the way that I'm blocking these things in, anything that you can see with your eyes. It's an abstraction. It's something intellectual that does make its way into our drawing, but not always in a way that is represented by a value or a feature or, or something like this, right? Uh, it's something that we're kind of thinking about and meditating on and using to kind of understand what we are seeing visually. So that is the basis. If you're confused about what the center line is, this center line, this classic center line that we see that runs down the, the face, it's not something visible. It's something conceptual. Now we are seeing these, uh, these three heads. They're my kind of quick sketch heads from a previous tutorial. And we're actually going to start a little bit before this, but we're going to kind of segue into talking about this drawing because basically we're looking at a head uh, from different perspectives. What we're trying to do is to understand the head as a kind of three-dimensional structure, and we're trying to be able to conceptualize it in a three-dimensional space. And I want to start out with like this most basic idea, right? We've all seen like if we've ever taken any kind of portraiture course with any portraiture teacher of any kind of reputation, the first thing they will do is draw some ovoid like this and say that the head is kind of like this, this egg shape, right? And usually that will be kind of accompanied by some kind of uh, concept of a, of a light source kind of hitting that form. Right. And uh, this is the way that we understand like the first simplification of the head. Now, what usually comes after this, right, is some idea of a center line. The center line works basically because faces, right, are symmetrical. And because they're symmetrical, then the center line can tell us something. But let's imagine that we have actually uh, drawn that there is a line actually on this egg shape. And let's say that that egg shape turns to the right. Effectively, what will happen to that center line is that it will echo the form of the egg shape as it turns. So now, through that center line, I've established that this shape is not flat. This shape has volume, and as it turns, so is revealed like a different aspect of its surface, right? So if we have one side and then two sides, we see less of side number two as the form turns to the right. So we talked about how the head is essentially symmetrical, right? Every time we find something on one side, we are going to find it on the other side. The ears, the eyes, the outside corners of the mouth, uh, the external orbital apophysis, you know, these bottom edges of the frontal bone. Um, really everything that we find uh, uh, within the head is going to be arranged in, in exactly this way. Uh, and that is, uh, once again, the basis upon which the center line idea starts. So uh, looking at our guy down here, we split the forehead, we, uh, we split the uh, kind of lower half of the face below the nose, uh, um, right down the center, and even the nose itself, we can just toss the center line across that as well. And we've separated those two sides, and we're going to do the same thing uh, up here on this guy. Um, and we're going to go through and you can actually see it's kind of funny looking at these drawings You can actually see in places where I've left behind some uh, some little echo of that that center line that I that I use when I kind of block these in um, So just interesting to uh, consider there that uh, Watching this whole tutorial as well would would also kind of reveal to you some of the practicalities of that now notice that here, right? We have, of course, the nose of the model, and the nose is projecting outward from that front plane of the face, which if we view it from the side, right, if we look at the head from the side, uh, we're going to have something that looks roughly like, uh, like this. Now, this contour line here uh, that, um, that we're looking at right in the front of the face uh, is actually essentially the center line. Uh, if we kind of turn that head around to the right, that would be running right through here. Um, as it stands, in, in a profile, it sits all the way at the edge. Um, but then, of course, we have the nose that kind of projects outward from that. 
So when we're looking at the head from the front, uh, that means that that center line effectively just kind of stays where it is. But if we're looking at it in three quarter, we have a kind of a choice to make. We can either draw the head independently, right? Or draw the center line independently of the, uh, of the nose that's projecting outward. Or we can use the center line to further elaborate a little bit on the, uh, the actual movement of form along the center line. Now, since we already have like a drawing to look at here, I think, you know, maybe it, it, it wants us to, to kind of account for that, that movement of form. Uh, but for me, I think that uh, I want to consider this first from the most basic perspective. So let's go right through the nose. And uh, I'm going to do the same thing through here. I'm not going to consider the nose. I'm really just going to look at the orientation of the center line. From there, uh, what I think is kind of most interesting actually is to start to look at how the features line up along that center line. So uh, essentially, and this is maybe going to be a, uh, um, I don't know if this is a challenging one to, to establish, but I think to the uninitiated, right, when you say that the head is essentially symmetrical, uh, I think that we start to, to consider, well, wait a minute, I know that I've seen like those, you know, pictures online of people for whom like you, you take a picture of them and they kind of flip one side uh, to kind of mirror the other side. And then it looks like a totally different person um, because nobody's face is actually symmetrical. While, by the way, that's totally true uh, that, that we are not perfectly symmetrical. Uh, I would just say that we are probably 90% uh, um, symmetrical, 95% symmetrical, um, just in the same way that, that even though individual people look very different from each other. We also, in one sense, look very much the same, right? Each of us has kind of cheekbones on either side. Each of us has uh, uh, ears on either side. There's so many things about our heads and our faces that are so much in common uh, that even though the nuances may change, uh, right? Like the, the shapes of the eyes and things, there is so much that, that is similar. I say all of this to kind of get to the point, which is, when we're early on in a drawing, mapping out the symmetry of the face is a big part of kind of establishing, you know, an accurate basis in your drawing, right? The ears on a head should be roughly similar heights, especially if we're starting from a place, and, and let's not kind of forget this, where we actually have nothing on the paper, right? Here, we have heads to look at, and so it's a little bit easy for us to take for granted that the head is symmetrical. But when we have nothing on the paper, uh, it's th I think it's very interesting to start to kind of establish that uh, in the first place. So after we do that, I'm going to do that kind of on each of these uh, uh, features or each of these uh, portraits, mostly because I want to indicate to you that all of these lines are kind of connected to each other in the sense that uh, everything should tilt roughly along the same axis. So for instance, if I have uh, these, this set of uh, brow ridges here tilting along one axis, and then I tilt the mouth along a totally different axis and the nostrils on a totally different axis, I'm going to have a head that doesn't really uh, literally line up or, or figuratively line up uh, for that matter as well. So that's what we're kind of trying to uh, avoid or what we're trying to establish um, in this kind of basis uh, for the drawing, right? Now, procedurally speaking, uh, as soon as I um, as soon as I think about kind of blocking in the head, I do want to get the kind of basic proportions from top to bottom and side to side. Uh, so you know, giving yourself some kind of like you know circular, vague circular ovoid shape uh, for the head, I think is really useful and very uh, very advisable um, when you're talking about kind of uh, blocking in the head. Like I said, for the sake of an explanation, you can kind of you know, want to talk a little bit about uh, the arrangement of some of the features before we actually do that. Um, but we will also probably get to like kind of starting one of these from scratch as well and, um, uh, and the choices that you're going to take to do that. But for now, let's talk about how these drawings kind of conform to that idea. So now I have my features, my, my eyes, the outside corners, uh, and let's kind of actually mark a few things because in a way, working with center lines uh, and, and working with horizontal axes, uh, or axes, I think is the, the right way to pronounce it. It does depend upon where you're looking at. I think about these kind of anchor points, right? Uh, and usually I'm looking for things that I can see on both sides of the model. Uh, so here, right, we have that, uh, actually, you know what, let me switch to another color. I feel like we're not really seeing this green all that well. Uh, that's better. 
Uh, so here we have the outside corner of the eye, right? That is a landmark that I can see on both sides of the face. So then very useful for me. I talked a little bit about the uh, frontal bone and there's this really complicated name for this area, the external orbital apophysis. You don't need to know that, but you know if we all touch our eye sockets, you know, just uh, at that upper outer corner, uh, we can kind of feel this little bony ridge that happens there. Uh, that bony ridge, of course, is going to be something symmetrical that we can rely upon. The outside corners of the mouth also uh, symmetrically constructed. The uh, wings of the nose as well symmetrically uh, constructed. So all of these different areas for me are chosen not at random. Uh, usually they line up with some useful anatomical feature. Now you can improvise that. And, and I think there's going to be an important thing in, in kind of talking about all of this that I'm going to show you the way that I that I do this. I might do it differently, you know, three times out of five. I might, you know, uh, depending upon the pose, you know, I might choose something different. Like I don't really uh, see the external orbital apophysis here. Uh, I mean, I do see the top edges of the um, of the eye sockets, for instance. I see that here as well. Uh, but like I said, maybe there's some features that outside corner of the eye, for instance, on this guy down here on the right we don't see that very clearly so i wouldn't really choose that as a point of emphasis in terms of establishing symmetry uh, but let's go back to our our guy in the middle here and i'm going to switch back to um uh, to some red so that we can see this pretty well the next thing that i want to get to actually is to start to arrange some of the features that correspond to the center line so basically i'm looking for structures of the head that correspond or connect to the center line of the head. So here we have the glabella, right? It's this downward facing plane that sits just between the eye sockets. Uh, we also have uh, a bit of a kind of downward facing plane here just below the, the lower lip. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, eventually we have, um, and let's, let's go ahead. I was gonna try and stay totally simple, but let's go ahead and get a little bit more complex. I'm going to start to indicate also the way that the planes of the nose uh, emanate outward or push outward from the front plane of the face, right? Because uh, it's going to be kind of interesting because another feature that I tend to like connect quite strongly to is that bottom plane of the nose and the way that that relates to the center line. So I have like these three different kind of features that I'm kind of connecting to that center line. Uh, eventually, this is part of a strategy that gets us from the center line out to the more disparate features of the head. Now, eventually this becomes uh, something that, that helps us really to kind of show the three dimensionality of the head. And maybe let's get to another place where that's really interesting. Um, as soon as I just correct my center line here, <laughs> um, a perfectionist uh, um, as always, I have to like make sure it's perfect. But let's also look at ways that these structures and features kind of reveal themselves to us, right? So I drew this kind of um, line on the left-hand side of the face, and now I want to kind of re-examine that, right? Because what we see along that line is a series of angle breaks, right? So we have this angle break that's happening right here uh, at the edge of the face along the front aspect or front feature of the zygomatic bone, right? The cheekbone. Well, if I look for that here, and then I look for that on the other side. Uh, by the way, you know, I have such a self-consciousness about the arrows that I draw. I want them to be perfect, but they never are. But that's life. If we look for the zygomatic bone on the other side, we find that there's this highlight that hits here. If we kind of look at that, that contour again, we could say that really that there is a kind of symmetry expressing itself uh, also through that section of the head so that we understand that that angle that we see over here is also going to be represented on this side. Once again, that symmetry kind of coming into play. Uh, and so because of that, I can kind of start to establish a kind of, uh, um, in a way, like a second contour within the face, right? So <laughs> I know that starts to sound complicated, but essentially what we're trying to do um, is we're trying to, just like we did with like, for instance, the outside corners of the mouth, I looked for one here, I found another one there. If I find a feature along the contour, I'm going to try and find that in the interior of the head as well. So that should be lined up essentially symmetrical also to the, uh, to the contour. So that begins to um, really get to kind of the, the heart of where this process kind of moves forward, 
which is to say that this center line at its inception is like this flat and abstract thing. But I think it quite quickly, if you follow it, if you start kind of looking into it, it quite quickly leads you into a place where you're understanding three-dimensional structure. Even if you're getting kind of further along in a drawing, we are placing the features, you know, and I, I get asked about this actually sometimes when I'm explaining this, this subject, you know, is it something that you use all the time or don't you get like to a point where you kind of stop using it because you already know how to draw? Well, no, I mean, I think that even when I'm quite advanced and I know what I'm doing and I'm really far along in a drawing, I'm still kind of looking at it from this perspective. I still have this kind of wireframe in my mind and I have a really great and embarrassing metaphor that I like to use to describe how I see things. It actually doesn't really differ too much from what we're seeing on the screen right now, but if any of you are, and I'm, I know I'm not that old yet, so I know this reference should still land, uh, but if you remember watching the original Terminator movie, there were scenes shot from like behind the Terminator's eyes, right? So you're seeing what he's seeing. And then he would like look around the room and he would, uh, he would look around the room and he would like center on somebody and you would see this kind of like wireframe develop over his over their face while he was analyzing kind of who they are and, and what they look like. That was his way of like understanding or recognizing those people. It's a lot like that. Even if I'm looking at the person such as they are and I'm looking at the model such as it is, in my mind I'm kind of searching for these reference points always. But let's start out, let's actually start this one out um, really as if we were kind of making a drawing of it. So in a sense, like the center line is actually the, probably not the first thing I would actually put into a drawing. Uh, I'd first probably go for the kind of general uh, overall shape of the head. Uh, then quite immediately after that, I would kind of get into the center line. Uh, so it is something that kind of happens a little bit progressively. Um, and I don't usually stick to like, you know, perfectly straight lines uh, or anything when I'm um, uh, when I'm working. So there will be some arc, there'll be some sense of gesture inside of them uh, as well. So now that I have my kind of general skull shape and I've got my center line, you say I usually like focus it kind of on the face, but the reality is it should also go all the way to the the kind of the back of the of the head as well. Um, so kind of going up the forehead um, and kind of eventually disappearing around the back of the head. So immediately after that, from uh, just uh, an efficacy standpoint, uh, I would start with the um, I would start going for the uh, the brow ridge, and I would probably start to also consider like where the cheekbone is. This contour on the left would be like among the first things that I would start to change, because it kind of sets up the basis for like the major planes of the face, which is to say, I need to know that the eye sockets are like kind of set back from the kind of upward facing planes of the forehead, for instance. And then also obviously the cheekbone uh, and and the, the shape of this contour kind of influence, uh, influences us to want to understand like where this kind of major plane shift is as well. So this would be, you know, reasonably um, a kind of version of a head that I would that I would block in. Right, so it looks something like this. Probably I think I got maybe the, the, the back edge of the skull, I kind of put that a little bit too far, uh, too far forward. Uh, and then of course, like that, that zygomatic arch would be something I would be, uh, I would be thinking about as well. Again, it's hidden on this side, it's a little bit further kind of around the back of the model, so we don't really see it there. Um, but this is that kind of three quarter portrait that, that I was describing. So let's put the glabella in as well. The glabella really is just this kind of keystone shaped plane that, that runs uh, through that, that section of the center line. Um, we've established already a few places where anatomically things line up. And let me take also this green so we can kind of mark those. So the outer kind of bottom edges of the uh, frontal bone are one place where we find a kind of corresponding relationship in between the skull uh, and this kind of center line concept, the zygomatic bones uh, that are, that are uh, making themselves evident in one way or another. Uh, here and here on each side of the face. In the lower half of the face, as you can see, it's mostly like kind of fatty tissue that is kind of expressing itself like the, um, we, both, we have these uh, kind of muscular nodes here at the outer edges of the mouth. Um, and you can see how the, the contour is actually influenced by that and how the, the values over here are gonna be influenced by that as well. Not something skeletal, um, uh, obviously, 
the, the soft tissue is, is not present here, so we don't really see the muscles kind of coming down from the zygomatic bone, attaching to that node and that node going across the, uh, the lips and so on. Not so much until we get down to, say, the, uh, the chin, do we have like another area where the center line is kind of um, uh, being, or, or sorry, representing a series of planes that are kind of more observable on the uh, on the surface so uh, when we get down to here we have the uh, the kind of top plane of the of the chin uh, which lines up effectively what with what is called the uh, the mental protuberance or the mental process and it speaks to that sense that you know there is an improvisation here uh, you know the more you know about the skull and I was talking um, earlier in the the process I was talking about how the more that you know about the skull actually the more that you can reveal in this process uh, and I think this is one of those instances you can really kind of drill down, right? If, if we have the you kind of the breadth of the subject up here, you can really drill down with anatomy and get to kind of some really deep places in terms of understanding this, this really simple tool. Like we started out, right, talking about kind of an egg shape and how the center line could help you to indicate that the egg shape was turned away from you in one direction or the other. Now we're getting into like showing the highlights on the cheekbones because we understand the symmetrical structure of the skull as it is being kind of uh, indicated uh, by the center line uh, and how that affects our kind of modeling and rendering of form uh, in, in a place, like I said, that is so advanced um, and so much past the, uh, the kind of block in stage. Hello again, I just wanna say at the end of this video, thank you so much for watching and please remember to like and subscribe. And if you're interested in in-depth portraiture tutorials, whether in drawing or in oil paint, you can follow this link and it'll take you directly to my Patreon page where you can access something like 100 plus hours of tutorial content for five or $10 a month.